They put the uh, embargoed line at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I never run that deep into uh, Gongos. Uh, let's jump into the next yep. game, boys. Freo play the Gold Coast, and it uh, should be a cracking game this one. A dollar nine favourites are the Dockers, and that's because they're at home. Gold Coast did well against West Coast last time they were over there. Got within about 16. Freo Mantle have won four of seven at home this year. Congratulations to the Medi Pavlix, he's 250. You can see the ins and outs, Shorties. What do you reckon of them? Well, Sandilands out, Ballantyne Grover in. I'll tell you what, they don't win without Aaron Sandilands, but we're going to look at that in a minute. But they were really good last week. They had 42 tackles in their forward half, which is probably their best for the season. Um, I, I think they found a couple of players. One player, Greg Broughton, who we know is a defender, a small defender, really went in the midfield and gave him a lift last week, and I think he's tough enough to go there and play. Don't know about them, his motor. But one person, Michael Johnson, I... I think I see a bit of Paddy Ryder in Michael Johnson. Just doesn't grab the ball, the the game by the throat and take it on. And I think to be a really top class player, you've got to start doing that. You mentioned Aaron Sandlands there before, and I'll just show you some stats, Shorey. Last week, I know yeah. you're all over this. Uh, with Aaron Sandlands on the left hand side there, before he was taken off the ground last just week, just prior to three quarter time. Just prior to three quarter time, and after three quarter time on the right hand side, you can see the clearances are up by 14. The hit outs to advantage are up by two. And look the scoring score. is up. I mean, they seem to do it without Aaron Sandlins. How does that make sense? Well, where the opposition f feed off him, but they've got to find a way of utilising his strength a lot better. The big one was a three-quarter time. It was 18 set, uh, 21 centre bounce clearances, 18 to Brisbane, 3 to Freo. When you've got an advantage like that, yeah. how can you have a discrepancy like that? 18 to 3, got to get better. Brisbane didn't score in the last quarter when he was off, and they had three inside 50s for the whole quarter. That's why I said they played pretty well, Freo. It's surprising. <laughs> A tough run coming home for Fremantle as well. I just want to show you this, boys. They need uh, they need wins and they need them very, very quickly. Fremantle at the moment have won seven games so far. So you'd think they need to win another five or six on the way home. You can see it's a pretty tough run there, especially towards the latter part. Now, Sandlins comes back in around about round 20, if he does, and Mundy. So they're two best players back in round 20 and 22. I think it's a little bit too late for them in the year if they don't get the job done in those next four rounds. Well, you look at the home games there as well. West Coast, in a, in a big one, Hawthorne. Yeah. Collingwood was was there as well at, at Patterson. So yeah. the, the teams they do play at home, it's not like Geelong at skill where they get the uh, the easier teams. It's tough. That was That'll be tough. That was the point I actually wanted to make. Gold Coast boys, Jono, what do you make of this mob? Ins and outs there. Oh look, they yeah they made some changes again, which they which they do on a on a regular basis. So we get to uh, get to see a few more younger younger guys going to battle. They did battle pretty well last week against the Dogs for for four quarters. They're winning plenty of contested ball, which the coaching staff must be wrapped for a young side to win contested ball as often as they do. Fans, I know they got some like Zach Smith killing them as a ruckman, and they got some senior players in around the stoppages. But the younger players are thriving on that. Lynch is a smart forward. But the biggest thing for them now is their spread from the contest. That's where they're lacking. So they're winging in tight. They're just not getting out of there quick enough or being able to do it long enough throughout a game. They're getting better, deeper into contest, that's for sure. Yeah. I know this is not linked to Gold Coast, but it's linked to you know players coming in. Israel Folau, boys, played Belconnen last week. Just want you to have a look at the style, the marking above his head. The kicking looks oh, quite actually... fluid, doesn't it? I think he's almost, he looks more advanced than uh, Carmichael Hunt. Even that goal there where he got it to run along the ground, end over end. <laughs> And the marking on the chest, he just looked very comfortable, even the way he jumped. Are you saying he's more, not more advanced than Carmichael is now? No, no, but at the but same, same stage. Time, yeah. Yeah, look, I, I see a lot of similarities, actually, between where Carmichael was at and where Big Izzy's at, but it's good to see him doing well. The forward line seems to be really... Uh, Big well, he got the flight of the ball then. That was the pleasing yeah, thing. We all thought he would have trouble with the uh, the balance of the game, mm -hmm. and he looks very mm -hmm. good at that. Well, he certainly had trouble when he was in defence. Yep. And they were zigzagging the leading on him, but I mean, I think as a forward, he looks pretty natural. Who wins at Pickers? Fremantle? Uh, I think it'll be a lot closer than everyone thinks, but I think you'd have to go Fremantle. Shorey? No, nah, Fremantle. Having his 250th, congratulations, Freo. Essendon play Geelong in our next 